series and parallel combinations of capacitors are quite familiar to us because we've already looked at series and parallel combinations of resistors. And in fact, they work opposite to how resistors work. So that will give you an idea of what our formulas are going to look like. So first of all, let's sketch up a parallel combination of capacitors. So I'll sketch up four capacitors like this, and they'll be just in some circuit somehow. I won't finish drawing the circuit. Uh, let's maybe label some current. And now we know that current branches at the nodes. So we've got a node here and a node here, and we'll have current coming out, same I as well here. But current will branch through each of these independent one, two, three, four branches with these capacitors in them, right? So if we think about what happens to the electrons, where they're building up, so the electrons are going to be building up on the other side of this plate. And there's going to be a lot of them. And then when you want to use the capacitor, you want to discharge, these electrons are going all together in my picture here they're in this direction and they're going to combine so here I've got two combining here I've got two more combining so my electrons by the time they get to this branch you know I've got four arrows that have combined because the discharge from all of those capacitors can happen in parallel so if I'm mathematically writing this I can say that capacitance, and you can say equivalent or total, I'll say EQ for equivalent. Well, if this was C1, there's one branch, C2, we're just adding it together. There's C2, C3, and C4. And you add them together in parallel. Now this is opposite to how the resistance would be if these were resistors in sorry if these were resistors in parallel, um, then we would have a different formula, right? So it looks like a series resistance calculation, but this is actually a parallel capacitor. So parallel, there we go. Series, I'll come over here. Now for series, let's sketch up some capacitors in series. So again, four capacitors as part of a circuit. This time I'll draw a whole circuit. C1, two, three, and four. And now if we think about how these are going to work in series, What we actually have here is we have C1 when the electrons building up and they want to discharge. They're going to, in this case, try to go up. But when they try to go up in my circuit, they're going to run into the next capacitor. There's going to be a barrier there. So we have a bunch of charge on C4. When you discharge it, it gets to C3 and then it's stuck, right? There's no physical connection between um, capacitor C4 and the other plate of C3. So there's a break in there split by that dielectric. And so the charge is going to get stuck. Same with that C3. If it tries to go to C2, it's going to get stuck. If it tries to go to C1, it's going to get stuck. And so this series combination is going to result in uh, basically lower capacitance overall. So if I were to say C equivalent here, this is actually an inverse. So we've got 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2. And now just like with the resistors, I have to invert the left-hand side as well. So we have these sort of flipped fractions for my equation here for equivalent capacitance in series. 
So again, series equation is here, parallel is on the left. So let's look at some examples here. So find the equivalent capacitance. So I have three capacitors. And it's going to be helpful to know which ones are in series and which ones are in parallel to calculate the equivalent capacitance. So I have a node here in my circuit. And so where I have this branch, so my uh, current flow, if this is positive, I comes down. So my current's going to branch here. So that indicates that these two are in parallel. Okay, and then afterwards you could draw a new equivalent circuit and these two are going to be in series with this one, with the six. So in parallel, think of our equation. That's actually the simple calculation. So we can say parallel, let's do this one first. C equivalent just is 10 plus eight. 18 microfarads because the electrons can be discharged all at the same time and just come together um, like different tributaries in a river. So that's 18 for those two in parallel. And now in series, my C equivalent is going to be 18 plus six. But remember, in series, we have this inverse relationship. So my equation has one over. So one over the equivalent capacitance equals 1 18th plus 1 6. So 1 6 is 3 18th plus 1 18th is 4 18th or 2 9th. And then you flip it back. I'll do one more step. And then to actually solve for C equivalent, we have to flip both sides back. So this now becomes nine over two or 4.5. And the same units will hold. So this is going to be micro farads. So this one now is my overall or my total, 4.5 microfarads. Okay, here's one for us. All capacitors are 75, find the equivalent capacitance. So I've got kind of an interesting arrangement here and then I've got definitely a parallel arrangement with this one in the middle because I have a branch here. But I also have a node at this point and down here. So working this out, it looks like along this branch these are in series. And same with along this pathway here. So we have series, series. And then we have actually three in parallel. So I have one node there and one node there, leading to one, and then these are together, two, together, three in parallel. So let's do the series ones first and then simplify it. So capacitor is in series, so this will be one over C series. These are both 75, so 1 over 75 plus 1 over 75, so that's 2 75ths, and then you flip it back. Which is 75 over 2, and that's going to be 37 and a half. and my units are microfarads. So what you can now do is redraw the circuit. So maybe I'll just try to sketch this again. 
So there's my original middle branch. And now on one side, I've got this one's 37.5. And then the branch could look like this. And if you like keeping your diagram sort of symmetrical, what we end up having is an equivalent looking circuit like this, where each of those two in series are 37 and a half, and then the one here is 75. So now we have a parallel calculation. So we have C, maybe total this time, we'll say. Now in parallel, each branch can independently discharge together. So we just need to add them all together. And this is two times 37.5, which takes us back to 75. So the total now is 150 microfarads.